It's a bright day out here today. It's hot. I think summer has finally arrived. It's May 25th. Uh, we have kind of an oxymoron type of thing going on today. Uh, what I would call a good problem. Uh, this yard of bees behind me was scheduled to be involved in a research project with the University of Georgia today. It's been scheduled for a long time. Jennifer Berry and her crew at the Bee Research Lab are trying out new ways of uh, applying oxalic acid. She has some very promising ideas and uh, I was going to let her use these colonies and more to do some of her testing and research. But we have a problem, a good problem. Uh, we're having a very hard time finding any mites. We've been around to a bunch of yards, done a bunch of alcohol washes in the last few days, and throughout it all, we found one mite. Now, I don't have any illusions. I'm not going to stand here and tell you we don't have any mites, because I know better than that. But uh, considering that we were not able to find any except for that one, uh, these colonies don't have enough mites to do a research project on mite control. So we've rescheduled for late July, July 25th. We're going to move it back uh, two months. Hopefully by then the mites will have grown a little bit and she'll be able to do her research. Now the reason I'm doing this video is I thought some people would be interested in how we achieve that. Um, around the 1st of June I always have a few mites. I can't remember one single year when I've had this happen where we just absolutely couldn't find any mites. And we did something a little different last winter that I think was the reason. I've been a big proponent of using oxalic acid uh, sublimation or vaporization in the winter when the bees are broodless. And last year we did that in a very big way. The first thing I did was I was very careful with the temperature. I think a lot of people make the mistake of using that in the, in the winter when the bees are broodless when the uh, temperature is too cold. I think the ideal temperature for that is probably around 42 to 48 degrees Fahrenheit. You want the bees to be in the colony, not flying, but you don't want them to be clustered tightly. So we really tried to uh, treat when we had that type of temperature going on. And then my other thing was I had this theory that uh, if that type of treatment gets 90 or 95 percent of the mites, I wanted to go back again and get uh, 90 or 95 percent of the 10 percent that was left behind. And last winter, we just kept on going, and we actually gave them three treatments when they were broodless in late November and early December. Um, we did it five days apart, and we also gave them a double dose of what's considered the normal dosage. Normal, or up till this time, what's been considered the normal suggested dosage is one gram of oxalic acid per box. So double deeps would get two grams. Well, we were doing double, which meant for a double deep like these behind me, it would be uh, four grams. And I, ju I just think we annihilated the mites. Uh, I think it was extremely effective. Now, I know that some people may be tempted to comment that, you know, we got to be careful talking about uh, off-label uh, treatments and stuff like that. But I think if you look very closely, I think that amount of oxalic acid that's suggested is a really huge gray area. Right now there's a lot of research going on about larger doses. Uh, they did some research down at the University of Florida and have found that very large doses are extremely effective even when they do have broods. So uh, the, the playing field is beginning to change with this oxalic acid. It, it's really becoming one of my treatments of choice, um, especially when they're broodless in midwinter like that. I know it's not really the, the time that people want to start thinking about treating their bees in the fall for varroa mites, but I just thought this was extremely good information that wanted to get it out there so people would uh, have it later in summer when they start thinking about treating. Um, uh, Jennifer Berry and Lewis Bartlett at the University of Georgia have agreed to sit down with me in the near future and talk about all the research that's going on with, with oxalic acid. So that video will be coming up before too long. I've got a lot of other stuff in the in the works right now. i got to finish the, that Florida uh, beekeeper series. That's been taking quite a long time. But uh, before August 1st, I'm going to have a video out on more information on oxalic acid sublimation or vaporization. I think it has a huge part in my future and I think people need to pay close attention to it. Just wanted to share that information.